But we are live on one of the channels. <laughs> all right, all right. Hello, we are, we are live. We, we were trying to go live across a number of platforms, but I just had a message come up on the computer. So if you were looking at the top of our head then, with us looking slightly confused, that is the reason why. But hey, this is how I was going to start the video, was holding this up to create some intrigue if the camera would go into focus. There we go. Yeah. This here. Clay's calling it the hieroglyphics. This is the hieroglyphics of surfing. We're going to explain this and what this has got to do uh, in relation to your to your surfing, going to share a bit of a story from this morning. So it's all, all good and exciting stuff if you are on. Obviously, we didn't schedule this one in. We've just randomly appeared here on social media. So if you're on, I can see that there's a few people coming on now. So if you're on, check us through, through a few comments. We'll throw some of those up on the screen. We'll have a little bit of a, a little bit of a little bit of a chat, a little bit of a story, and then we'll be opened up to any questions that any of you have for Clay. So, and it's been a while. Um, it's been a while, you've been yeah, in Nicaragua. We did macaronis, um, I was back for a month, then did Nicaragua, back for a month. And over that period, I have been seeing patterns developing in surfers, and it's the same pattern again and again and again. Yeah. And that pattern is pretty much that over there. Okay, so the idea behind it is that we can almost categorize ourselves into certain groups. And a lot of people, Morning, gentlemen. when they surf, they think they're surfing at a whole nother level, but when they see the video, they're like, oh crap, Yeah, I'm actually over there. And um, the, I almost don't like doing video analysis. I really dislike it. I was, I was trying to make, make sure we, we were sharing this across all the platforms then, and that literally, broke my concentration from this because when you said you don't like doing video analysis which is a bit of a pain in the bum because uh, well, it's, <laughs> because that's a lot of what we do yeah it's not it's a pain in the bum it's just it doesn't inspire people because all they do is that they they felt something really good in surfing and they loved it and then they wanted to see what it looked like and it looks like shit okay and they're just like oh i can't surf but they're, they're having a really good time but that feeling doesn't tie into with um, what it looks like. So I suppose what we need to do is let's get some waves up and let's break down <clears throat> the different lines that the different surfers take. Yeah. Okay. And you'll probably find that if any of you are watching, that you, will, you guys will fall into these certain categories. So there's four of them. Um, and each of the line almost delineates the level of surfing that you're at. Mm. Okay, so. Cool. I think, so I was just I was just trying to share it into the Surf Hacks group uh, over there on Facebook. I think I man I've now managed to get it in. For some reason, the, the computer won't let us go directly into there. So, good morning, Bob. Bob's from, I don't know, it sounds like a Mar Mazatan, Mazatan, Maz Mazatan, Mazatan. It's somewhere, somewhere. And I'm, I'm going to eat cake instead of trying to uh, <laughs> jump that. Oh. Right, let, let's call some waves up. Let's call some waves are up. Are you happy to jump straight into this? Yeah, let's jump straight into that. Check this out. This is a, a Clayton cake. I bake those. We make surfboards and cakes. So we're all, we're all good here. Let's, um, let's bring the iPad up. Who are we going to start off with? Let's start off with, um, with Brian. He's probably not going to be happy that we're starting off with. Sorry, Brian. But Brian, if you're watching, then uh, we love you dearly. But we're going to use you. For the, so let's, in, in relation to, hang on, bring this back up again. We've got the, the figure of eight, the infinity sign, the wiggly line, and the straight line. Like so th this is a perfect wave to kind of draw that. So generally beginners, when they catch waves, they're almost catching foamies and they're heading probably pretty much in that line over there. So that's our bottom line. That's our straight line. Okay. Then you get um, lower intermediates. Now lower intermediates, when they surf, they almost take this yellow line, they kind of go to the bottom of the wave, middle, bottom of the wave, middle, bottom of the wave, middle. And they're not quite yet doing turns, there's the lack of confidence. And then you get your upper intermediates where they're happy to go out into the shoulder where they feel safe and then they come back and they do these turns, something like that. That's an Anthony line. That, probably an <laughs> Anthony line, yes. Okay. And oh, then it was, it was Mexico, by the way, Bob's in Mexico. That that Maz, that the place I couldn't say. Yep. This place is Mexico. Oh, fantastic! So I would love to go to Mexico and host a, a coaching clinic there. Mm. It's on my radar. If we can get a private wave in front of a resort, it's on. Um, so yeah, Paul, if you know of any spots, it's a beautiful coastal resort town. 
Yeah, oh, no. it's definitely on our radar. I'm sure Ant wants to go to Mexico. I'd love to go to Mexico. Okay, so let's let's get back to this. Is Nika just just offshore twenty four seven because of that lake? Um, we were just having this discussion before. You were saying it's weird because here on the Gold Coast it, we're like it rushing out. It does to go get. off onshore for a little bit. Um, I don't know. Generally, I think before rains or something like that. Okay. Like after rains. There's a general rule. It's offshore almost like twenty four seven. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Okay, so back to the lines that right. we take. So yeah, let's pay attention, Anthony. Watch this wave. So if I just pause them over there. All right. Cor Corin's on. Good evening, morning, Corin. Middle of the night for Corin. All right. So let's look at that line that the surf is taking. All right. So why is this particular surfer taking that line? Why do you think, Ant? Any ideas? Um, well, being in the water on this particular day, there was... There was a lot of excitement about this wave. It would suddenly come in. It, it looked like it was going to close out sometimes, so you'd panic and just go down the line. And it was a fast wave. Like, it, you could get some serious speed on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it feels good going fast. Yep. All right, so that's maybe one reason why this guy is kind of taking almost that line. A little bit of fear about getting caught up and, and then falling off because it was rather shallow. Okay, but it's only shallow back there and on the inside. Mm -hmm. It's not shallow where he is. No. Okay. If I had to ask you, is he looking at the wave? Is he seeing where... So basically, over here, this is where you get speed from. Down over here in the little corner is where you get power from. Yeah. Okay. Do you think he's reading his wave? No. Okay. So where's he looking? To he's infinity and beyond. Correct. In a Buzz Lightyear kind of way. <laughs> so... Any parents will, uh, will understand that reference? So what's happening, he's surfed himself onto a safe part of the wave. Yep. Okay. And then when he feels safe, he's going to want to start doing his turn. So there he's thinking about doing a turn. But again, plays it and looks to where it's safe. You see that? Mm-hmm. Okay, so when you surf, it's, it's vital that you look at the wave and you try to connect with the wave's energy. Such a good wave, this wave. All right, so beginners, they just want to go straight. They just want to stand up. So they end up going kind of down there. Your low intermediates, they don't pay attention to the wave at all. They pay attention to anything that scares them and how can I get to somewhere where it's safe? And if they feel safe, they will start trying to figure out some kind of movement. Yeah, yeah. Do you agree with that? I do, I do agree with that. Okay, so then let's jump into... Um, got Lisa, Lisa's up next. Okay, let's look at Lisa. Lisa's up next, okay. Okay, so a beautiful wave. Yep. Really, really fun. Let's just watch it. You take, you take it up a little bit closer to you. Okay. Because you've got to do so all this squiggles. Look at the line Lisa's taking. So it's, it's not racing out so much onto the shoulder. Okay, now let's break that down a bit. So she, she did a... a, a Big, what we call maybe a cardboard slide, but where did she project towards? The shoulder. Yeah. To where it's safe. Okay. Then she went into kind of like a, a very low squat because she's not feeling any energy in that wave. Okay. And then she kind of goes down to the bottom. So what we've got here now. You, you can see when she actually reconnects with, that, with, the, with the speedy bit again. But have a look at this. Now we've got something that looks like this. Do you agree with that line? To the bottom. Uh, yep. Out into the shoulder again. Yep. To back to the foam. That's, well, that's kind of looping back. Okay, well, put it this way. If we had to do figure eights, and a figure eight would look like, like this, all right? Yep. Lisa's figure eights are kind of like, does that make more sense? It's like a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> Bifocals. <laughs> so my point being, she's, she's not going to the top half of the wave. Yeah. So she's finding it difficult to get speed because she's not going up where you get speed from. Mm. All right. We, look at, let's zoom into this. All right. Look at her hands, where her hands are going. Look at where the board's going and look what unfolds. Can I, can I just say that? Can I just say, and I, uh, we might, I might send this off a little bit of a tangent here. That there... A lot of surfers, they surf with their arms down, right down by their sides. So yep. Lisa's doing really well there with her hands going forwards as if she's try trying to flick water. Yep. 
Okay. Well, the, so I just wanted to just point out that the whole point of this, yes, her technique's good. Mm. Okay. No, no gripes about the technique, but where's she looking? How is yeah, she further reading? down the line? Okay, so she is choosing the line that she's taking, and she's taking a, a very, very safe intermediate line, lower intermediate line. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to be upper intermediate, you have to change your line. Okay, so she's only going straight and kind of doing this. All right. Whereas you want to go more up to the top and, and open up those figure eights and change that line. Yeah. So, so one thing I am noticing here, um, <laughs> Steve, uh, which were the best. We'd love to watch. Unfortunately, I have to do some work. We'll check it out later. <laughs> yeah, go, and, go and do your work, Steve. Catch you later, Steve. Um, oh, Steve, good news. Your board's being shaped. Um, it's going to go in for glass, or it's in for glassing, so it'll be very, very soon. Very How's that for a live update? Yeah. Steve might have left already, though, and then so he would never actually get that message. So never mind. Um, no, so, so one thing that I did notice there was that that you had the, the figure of eight drawn on its side, and obviously the ultimate is to have that figure of eight to be a number eight, vert a vertical number eight. But on this type of wave here, would you still get that kind of vertical? Or yes. Because, because this was... I remember being out in the water with you on this day, and you were like, oh, these are really nice way... That it had a real nice... Because it doubled up on the inside. Yep. It, then you had this real nice big open face, and you, you all were almost drawing those okay, sideways so figure of eight, so... Let's look at how Lisa reads the wave. Okay. Okay. So on the takeoff over there, what do you think she's worried about? If I zoom in, she's worried about the drop. Yeah, she's looking down. Okay. Yeah. So she's, she's concerned about that. All right. Then once she makes the drop, where's she looking now? Sort of towards. Okay. So that means that she's concerned about that. Yeah. All right. Then she drives to where she was looking which is still over there. And then where is she looking at now? And she's looking down the line again. I would say that that was a kind of, that bit there, where she crouched down, that was yep. a kind of, that she was, I don't think she was really looking anywhere. That was just a kind of, I need to get some speed back again. Okay, so then like she's... A, like a completely unpresent moment, maybe, just for a split second. I, I agree 100%. She's not present on that wave. I'm doing I'm, I'm saying it from my own experience of doing that and kind of thing. And even there, she's in a beautiful part of the wave. Like, amazing. Where does she look? I, 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 okay. So, right. So, you're saying, where does she look? Where does she look? Where should she have looked? That's what I want. That's what I want you to draw. There. At, at this point here in time, at what point in time... Coming down, at what point in... Ah, oh, focus, camera down, focus. Okay, so... She, she, sh she should be looking there now, or This earlier? is the line she should take. She should go lower, draw it out, and try aim for that. Does that make some sense? It makes perfect sense. Okay, but because she's always continuously looking at things that scare her, and she's worried about what's happening down the line, I think she's... Most of her decisions are fear-based decisions. Okay, let's skip this and get Ant. Which one? We're going me. Gonna, gonna throw me under the bus along with everybody else. Here we go. Okay, so, so you're looking a so, lot so, so, more so, relaxed. So, so hang on. I, yep. So this, this is by no way am I the, the, the right way up figure of eight. But as we play it through, but before you sort of analyse it, let's play yeah. it. Okay. Let, let people sort of... See if they can pick up the things that I'm doing wrong and then go back through and see it afterwards and gotcha. then you can just have some self-satisfaction if you got it right. And you can't say, I'm looking like an idiot with the helmet on with some weird camera. Oh, no, the cam is the camera falling off at that point? No, nice, the I got on. it. You can't, you can't comment on the camera. So, all right. So, so have your thoughts about what you think I was doing wrong there, what I could have done better. I'll play it again and they can just watch it one more time. Actually, I'll play in slow motion again after this. All right. Okay. And I wasn't smelling my armpit at that point in time. I was trying to do that cool kind of mid-length longboarder kind of way. Okay, here it comes in slow motion. It's 
Such a fun wave. I wish we can go back there. It's so much fun. So the, the interesting thing Ooh. is your body language versus Lisa's body language. So there's certain things on Lisa's way that scared her, but then on your wave, that got you excited. And, and you wanted to play with that. Because yeah, I was going right for a start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, really, I'm so much more comfortable going right than I am on, the, on my backhand. When we were on this trip, we were surfing Maccas as well, which is the left-hander. Um, and yeah, I... I'd, okay, so I think I, we I missed... Get on quite so well going left. We missed your first turn. All right, so you've done your first turn. The first turn was amazing. I did an air. Okay. So then, if we jump into this, because I don't think anyone's actually typed in anything just yet. No, okay, oh, there's hang on, there, there is one comment. This is either Ant, you look stupid. Looks like having fun to me. Yeah, I agree with John. Yeah. Always having fun, my friend. Always. So the big difference with, let's say, Brian and Lisa, okay? Brian looked really stiff and nervous and scared. Lisa was looking basically... Watch out for the drop. I'm scared I'm going to miss the section. Watch out for the drop. I'm scared I'm going to miss the section. Whereas, if I look at your temperament, you, you're super relaxed. And where are you looking? I'm trying to look back at the phone. Yeah, but... you are, which is, which is yeah. awesome. Okay, so you can see you're clearly looking where you're wanting to go. Right, you, you cut a little bit short, which is fine. But then when you come off the bottom again... Oh, I look like I'm on the back foot there. Where are you looking now? Okay, so you can... Not too far down the line. No, you're looking up, which is great. Oh, okay, good. And it, almost exactly where you looked is where you go. And then where are you looking now? In my armpit. Ah, this you're is looking, the armpit one. <laughs> you're looking back there. So I'm presuming you're going to go all the way back around to the phone. Beautiful. So let me just give everyone a little bit of an update here. Look at Hey, smiley aunt. Um... I'm, I'm really working on trying to look back higher up at the foam. Just, so just if you're wondering whereabouts I am at in my surfing, if you're interested um, with my progression, because we've, we've been following it for the last couple of years, now it's to try and get the board to go up higher when I'm doing the cutbacks. Okay. So, and with you, compared to Lisa, you can see that you are looking at your targets. Lisa's focusing on things that make her scared, mm -hmm. all right? So you're surfing, even though you're coming off the bottom, it's still a little bit, let's call it figure eight style. Yep. Because if you watch your projection lines, see that you're going across? Okay, so it's starting here. Then you bring it around. So you can see that you're still surfing a little bit lateral, and that's got to do more with your setup. Because yep. I think you go to the shoulder, you feel, okay, I'm safe. Where's my target? And you do the figure eight. Mm -hmm. right. I, I would agree with that. My, okay. uh, my, 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 my reveling in my, <laughs> in my excitement right. is being slowly so diminished. Let's go. Uh, where's that wave of mine here? There's one of you popping up, yeah. Okay, so it's a slightly smaller wave. Let me move John's comment. Thanks for commenting, John. Much appreciated. Okay, so I'm, I'm having a, a glide in and I'm looking at the wave trying to read it. Okay, so straight away, um, I'm not running from things. I'm trying to slow down. Yep. I'm trying to set myself up in the right spot. So as the wave, I go nose to the beach, which is a slightly different line to the line that you're taking. Okay. From there, I'm looking at the target. And you can see my line takes me a little bit higher up. Uh, that section is a bit fast. But again, from the bottom of the wave... I track a bit more higher up on that. Mm -hmm. I'm looking maybe a little bit more round than what you would look around. Yeah. So I feel that you more neck, arm more yeah. twist. My left arm keeps on blocking me. Okay. So you could probably say that my commitment to looking at the power zones is, is a bit more than you. Yeah. All right. Then I fade that all the way around, maybe to the top of that wave. You're going to the bottom. Yeah. And then so, I go, so, so, so what you're doing there is, is what I'm currently working on with my cutbacks is to try and get a little bit higher up on the phone. Correct. Now, when I finish my turn, notice how I'm, I'm going that way. When I feel that when you finish your turn, you're going that way. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So if we draw some figure eights here, if, if I'm doing more of a, of a that line, 
Okay. Mm. Um, yours would have been more, more like that. Yeah, I agree. Does that make some sense? Yep. Okay. So, from from Brian, who was just looking down the line and only going bottom middle, to Lisa, who was going uh, bottom a little bit higher up and a bit more across, to you that would d was doing figure eights, and then to me that was doing a more of a sort of vertical mm. figure eight. That's, that's related to me, maybe doing the top ten too early. Was my top ten too early? Well... I don't know who you are. Facebook user. It's more the case of not committing and going deeper on the bottom turn to hit the top okay. a bit more tighter. Right. So committing more on the bottom turn. Yeah. So... Cause, so, so sorry, I don't want to... Well, I do want to interrupt you. This is one of the things that, that you said to me, especially on the left-hander. So when, when we were at Maccas, it was a case of taking off... And I was taking off and going straight away from it. And you were saying, try to ride down to the frame and then come up. And it changed the game completely. All of a sudden, it was just like, boom, and I felt this different power. Yep. So you can understand here that Brian, the first person that we surfed, takes the red line. Okay. Okay. Anyway, very, very let me, let me safe. Get that out of the way. There we go. Trying to get to a part of the wave where um, nothing bad's going to happen. So okay. lots of fear, lots of anxiety. Lisa, who was going a little bit more top to bottom, and Brian, let's call it bottom middle, but still projecting to where they feel safe. Yep. And then yourself having fun with it, but still not kind of projecting to your targets. So if you look mm -hmm. at my level of commitment on my turn as opposed to you, I'm not really hitting those targets. So... If you look at the lines that each of the surfers take, what is the underlying factor holding them back from surfing the wave to its full potential? What is the underlying factor? Yeah. I feel like this is a quiz I'm going to fail at. Well, okay. well, well there's, surely there's more than one thing. There's, like, there's some fear there. There's, the, there's, there's whereabouts they're looking. There's the line that they're taking. Is one of those right? Yeah, <laughs> okay. you, you, you're right, 100% <laughs> correct. I keep saying 100% correct, I'm going to start using that phrase. You are absolutely right. Yep. Correct, Congratulations. Um, okay, if you had to tell Brian, who was going straight, to do one thing to get to, to Lisa's stage, what would you tell her? Tell him. To get to Lisa's, it would be more relaxed and go down. Just stand up and just go down. Just stand up, go down. That's what I would say. Okay, so to stand up and go down. So well, what is Brian doing wrong? He's, st he's standing up tense and just going as fast as he can. So are you saying that tension is making him take that line? Yeah, because I think that he's looking there. His body then tenses up and then he just goes... Shoo. So he's only looking at, at where the wave's safe and he's trying to get to the safety of, like, oh, I want to make this wave, I don't want to fall off, okay? But then where's his thought process at? Where's his mind at? Why is he doing that? Because he, he's, he's travelled halfway around the world to surf this amazing wave, mm. but yet he's, he's not paying attention to it. Yeah, well, well then I'd say that, that, that that's where fear comes into it. Corin's um, just said it, actually, I'd, I'd broadcast. All, all of those things, things of fear, yeah. Yeah, all of the things I said, it all does all stem back to fear. So the line that you take is all, so it is, it is all down to fear. And this, and this comes back to, and anyway, let me just take this off there. Um, I suppose if we look at this from a, from a, because so when there's fear, when you sort of say, well, just stand up and relax and get to the bottom of the wave, that doesn't really kick in no. because fear then just goes, nah, that's not the thing I'm going to do. Because that, to me, is not safe. Because we're just trying to stay safe the entire time. And this is the reason why if somebody was drowning in a river and you threw them a, a rope of razor blades, they would grab the rope of... Even if they cut their hands to shred, they would grab the rope of razor blades because it would seem like that's probably the safest thing, even if it's not necessarily the safest thing. So, so yes, we got to say to Brian, stand up and do that. But fear's going to take over. Yeah, so, so how do we... So, so Brian wouldn't listen. So how do we get around that then? Well... It's so I do this on the trip, and yeah. a lot of the guys don't like it because I make them face the fear. So you 
told me when you were doing public speaking, uh, yep. the first thing you did is take a step towards the mm. person you want to talk to because there's no coming back. So it's almost like if you're scared of the monster under the bed, just have a look at the monster. Yeah. Is it there? And most of the times the fear that you're worrying about isn't validated. It's in your head. Yeah. Okay, so you need to take the risks and you need to, to broaden that uncomfortable feeling and actually dive into it and start playing with it. So what I liked about your surfing is you're playing with it. Yeah. You, and your lines are changing and you're having more fun and your surfing starting to go to a new place, which is really, really exciting. Yeah. Um, the hard thing for our customers is that most people in their learning phase, if you think of, of a baby learning how to walk, it would have fallen a few times. Yeah. People hold on to that, um, that fear and it almost becomes trauma and then that trauma haunts them through their surfing. Yeah. Instead of like, oh, I learned this from that or I learned that. And it's, it's part of the process and just relax and just breathe. So I suppose if you had the right tools, you'd be able to deal with the trauma, you'd get over it, and then you'd just start having fun. But if the trauma just keeps, you just keep adding to it and the monster under the bed gets bigger and it's got bigger claws and it's, it's just, yeah. it becomes well, we, we have an, 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 paralyzing. An, we have a, an, an, an inbuilt, uh, I suppose, automatic response of, to catastrophize things. We, we make things appear way worse. We, yes. we think things can be worse than they are because that's what keeps us safe. Because if we can, if, if in our heads we can play it out in the worst possible scenario, we won't go near it. So you're saying face, but, face, but, face the demons under the bed. Okay, so then, yes, I am. But then, if only a surfer knows the feeling, you have to be present in the moment to enjoy the feeling. If you're worried about fear, you're worried about the future, or if something happened to you in your past, which is traumatic, you're reliving the past. So you're not in the moment. Yeah. If you are in the moment, you'd be looking at that wave and appreciating where you are and what you're doing, which is what I saw when you surfed. Mm -hmm. You were loving the moment. Yeah. Even though there's still a little bit of work for you to do where you could still... A lot of work. Take more risk. Yeah. And you'll get yeah. a higher reward. Yeah. So, uh, uh, just look at a few of these comments that have come through. Love yeah. you guys. Thank you. Hearing from you, your, your advice is... Uh, we've got some Argentina. Hey, from Argentina. Stoked. Safe surfing, I think that, that relates to me again. My shape of rips. Um, I, don't uh, I don't shape boards. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, see what I did there? That was funny. Uh, fear of the, I thought it was funny. Anyway. Fear of the pocket. Uh, but, yeah. but, okay, th the pocket is the fun part. And, and people run from it. They're scared of it. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. You, yeah. you were looking back at it, just going, whoa, this way is amazing. Yeah, it's pretty scary sometimes. Um, but I've learned, so, so, so this here, experience. Um, I think that's, that's great. So you talked about looking at the monster under the bed. What I would like to, to say, my addition to that, and the way that I like to describe it, if I'm ever talking to anybody, if I'm doing any public speaker training, anything like that, is it's about building evidence. So you think, I can't stand up in front of a room full of people and speak, or I can't get up on the wave and go straight down. We go, okay, well, let's just get you up in front of this friendly group of people here. The, they're all your friends. You, you, you know them. This is a little um, team-building activity. Get up in front of them. So you do that, and then you build a little bit of evidence, and you sort of go, oh, that wasn't that bad. So what I like to encourage people to do when it comes to building confidence, whether that's in your surfing, whether that's in public speaking, whether that's in anything, anything that you want confidence in, build evidence. And that is to go out and do tiny, wee little things that's going to make you go, oh, okay, because there's the competence, competence loop, the comp confidence, competence loop. And it's a bit like a snowball effect. You start off with a small little bit of confidence, roll it in the snow, and it gets bigger and bigger. It's really hard to go from being not scared of the pocket, uh, from being scared of the pocket to not being scared of the pocket in just one, one go. There is a journey that you have to go through. Now, you can take that journey really fast. Okay. Uh, go. Sorry. I would like each of those different surfers to literally just stand on the board where they are, don't move, and just to look around. Like, okay, that's the top. Yeah. That's the bottom. That's the foam. There's the power zone. And just know where they are. Mm. And if they knew where they are, they wouldn't be half as scared. Yeah. Okay, because they don't even know what they're running from. Yeah. They're just running. Like, what are you running from? It's like, 
There is no monster. It's like, oh, 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 okay. Yeah. So that's the one thing. The yeah, that, second that, that, thing... That, 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 that's really cool. Read that out. I spelt it wrong, I think. Judgment. Good versus bad. Okay, so a lot of us, when we surf, we judge ourselves. Okay. In, like, think of a kid playing. Right? If you're playing with cars or Lego or whatever, you are having fun. You, there's zero judgment. But as soon as you go, oh, that was good, that means you know what bad is. And then you don't know how to play with it. And then you're judging yourself. Okay, so yeah. when we surf, we're always making mistakes because the wave's always changing. But we're trying to find that element of fun where we, we're just riding this energy. Yeah. yeah. We, we spoke about this in Nicaragua. A wave has traveled thousands and thousands of miles to arrive on the beach, okay? And it's energy that's traveled. And the energy is gifting you the last of its life before it dies. So think about it. As the wave hits the shoreline, it's dead, gone. Energy's dissipated. That sounds quite sad. It is. Okay? It's going to spend its last living moments gifting you this energy. All right? So... I can't drink my tea now. <laughs> I'm upset. No, but, but listen to this, okay? When you have a good wave, you feel energized. So then, then you almost take on that energy and you have a great day. Yeah, yeah, yep. I agree with that. Okay, so if you think of that wave, well, it's given me this. Let me try take as much as I can with me rather than it just being wasted. Okay? So <laughs> it, it's a really fun way to then look at a wave and like, okay, I want, I want this energy, this energy, and try to scoop it all up and have an awesome day. Well, I'll tell you what then, that wave that I caught two years ago that decided to break my neck must have been a really pissed off wave just before it, it was, was about to die. No, it was. <laughs> It was an angry wave. This is, a, this is a really cool comment. You can, only, you can only overcome it by throwing yourself into the place that you are scared of. Do it bit by bit and often. Go body surfing, get smashed by the scary power zone, and you realise that you won't die. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I think that that, that comment now, I'm, I'm going to say I think that might be Anthea uh, who typed that in because you can't be supposed to use it a few times. But if it isn't, whoever, whoever you are, um, I think that that is great because that is linking back to that whole idea of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Now, you know, you don't need to take the biggest leap in the world if you're not ready for it, but just taking those those small steps each and every single time. Now, so this is something which has come up for me, and not even in surfing, but in my in my personal life, is playing it safe um, over the last the last couple of couple of years, so, and it's something that I've really identified with. So, well, we, we need to be aware. We were in Nicaragua, and I was near the end of the trip, and. We were with another coach, Adam, and Adam rides motorcycles and he, he, he does all this kind of stuff. So, See, Bob's with me. Jade, <laughs> the owner of the resort, rode up with, with her horse and her friend was there and they had a horse and Adam's like, yeah, give me a ride on the horse. And he hopped on the horse and he was like down the beach and he, he was galloping with, and with going his nuts with his mohawk. And she ca he came back and then Jade was like, do you want to have a ride? And I didn't want to, but I went, yes, because I was scared of it. I was yeah. like... So I hopped on the horse and it was cool, um, no shoes, just I was in boardies and just kind of riding the horse. I was like, okay, I got this. And I watched Jade and her hips were kind of moving with the horse and like things are cool. Then the horse just started to want to run. I was like, Jade, how do I stop the horse? And my feet were in the stirrups <laughs> and they're out here and my bum was off the horse and I please wasn't sitting that, anymore. Please tell me that Nico's filmed that. Nico's filmed it. Oh, good. Yeah, good. he has filmed it. When, when Nico goes, so, so Nico's still over there. When he comes back, we'll make sure we get that footage up. I had my hands out to the side. My, it was like a, like a starfish on, How weird on the is horse. it though? Because you, there's nothing rigid to hold on to when you're riding a horse. Yeah, so, you're like, oh, what do I do with my so hands? Jade, and then I ended up like one of those surfers. Jay <laughs> said, I, I held the reins too far okay, back. Hot, so hot. I had nothing to pull. So I was literally... I had no control, feet were in the And do you know what? I, was, I remember looking at the ground thinking, how am I going to fall off the horse? Am I going to roll? Am I going to starfish? I can't jump. Wait a minute. You, you, you were thinking about how you were going to fall? Yeah. So you were, looking, you were effectively looking at the reef? I was looking down, yeah. Then I was like, okay, look up at Jade and how is she riding? And I looked at Jade and then her back was straight, she was like slightly off the horse and all I did is I just copied. And I did my version of that and then suddenly I was like... <laughs> And then I was just like, I was galloping on the beach and some people came past and I was like, one hand, woo! And I rode past Nick, hey! And then I had to try to turn the horse. I was like, Jade, what do I do? <laughs> She's like, I right, just pull the one side. 
But it's amazing when I stop worrying about falling and I just looked at someone else riding. It's like, okay, how are they doing this? Yeah. And I, I just copied. Your body knows what to do. The mind gets in the way. So when you surf, you kind of want to let your body give it time to play, give it time to make mistakes. But when your body learns what it's supposed to do and the mind doesn't interfere with all that fear and all that negativity, you can be in the moment and you can have some of the best surfs of your life. Yeah. Kind of loopy backy here. Yep. Back to you talking about Brian and you would have told him to relax and just look at the wave. Yep. So I think I, I kind of alluded to that in, in my response when you asked what I would say. I found that a very powerful exercise to do in my surfing is to, is to stand up and just try and relax in that moment. Because if you're holding tension, so if your body is tense, because the mind and body are connected, you're setting yourself up to not be able to do anything for the entire time. So by, so by just doing that, all of a sudden, I, you, you have the learning experience of, okay, you're not doing anything, you're not necessarily turning, you're not gonna like, try and suddenly snap off of the top or anything, but all of a sudden, in that moment of being there, where you just relax, it gives your brain a chance to go, okay, so this is what it's like when you're yeah. stood right here. Then you can start feeling. Yeah. So, so it builds uh, a bit of evidence. So think about, we go to work and we're sitting at work for eight hours, it's a shitty job, we're tense, we've got deadlines, um, we're trying to make money. There's all this type of stuff. For, so for almost for like eight hours a day, we, all we know is tension. Mm. And then um, because we, we, we're walking like this, sitting at the desk, our body is just in a, in a tense position. Yeah. So I think naturally, as humans, we're, we're losing touch of how to relax. We're losing touch of how to move our bodies and we're losing touch of how to actually be in the moment. And for that reason, when you get it in surfing, it's amazing, but it's becoming harder and harder and harder to feel that in surfing mm. because of gen our general like day-to-day -day lives that we're living. Yeah. So how would you get someone to relax? If someone's coming to you and they, they just wound up and they're wired. Oh, breath, straight away. I go straight to the breath. Yeah. Because how we breathe is how we live. Yep. And then- That was very profound then, wasn't it? From, from that, that'd be the, how we, how we breathe is how we live. Okay, so then, <laughs> And another interesting one is also, also where's your head at? Like, oh, is it positive or is it negative? Because a lot of us, so an, oh, another good one is just, um, oh, what's it called? It's not appreciation meditation, it's, it's gratitude meditation. Mm. As soon as you start realizing what you're happy for, you, as opposed to like what you've maybe missed out on, right? You start to relax, you're like, oh gosh, uh, it's just a beautiful sunset, like, oh, relax. I've had a great surf, oh, relax. So just some gratitude meditation goes a long, long, long way in helping you realise that you don't have to be wound up all the time, 24-7. So. Yeah, yeah. A, a cool little task. We're, kind of, we're, we're, going, we're going a bit deeper into personal development side yep. of things here. A, a really, <laughs> sniff, sniff. <laughs> sniff, sniff. Um, so, so originally, Clay wanted to title this whole life Doing Lines. <laughs> so I'm glad that we didn't call it Doing Lines with, 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 that, uh, with, with that comment in there. So, so one thing that I do, I've got this uh, A4 diary thing that I fill out every single day. At the beginning of the day, there's a whole bunch of prompts that I have to do. At the end of the day, there's what's one thing that you really um, are grateful for about the day? So, and just doing that, that one thing. And then at the end of the week, I flick back through and I go, oh, yeah. Because you do forget about these things as well that they yeah. happen because th there's, there's a lot of really cool stuff that happens. Um, I was going to say something and, oh, yeah, so we might, might, might go off another, oh, no, there's, there's two things I want to say here. I'm going to forget one of them. But right back at the beginning of this live, I said that I was going to share with you a story and the reason why we've ended up doing this live about these, uh, the surfing hieroglyphics today, is because it's, um, I, I went out this morning on the soft top, surfed some Wednesday waves, it was uh, Wednesday waves going to break. Do you like what I did there with the whole Wednesday legs going to break? Wednesday waves are going to break. Anyway, no, clearly you didn't like it. Never mind. Anyway, so I, went, I was out surfing down at the alley and it was, it was waves that didn't really have any bottom. They were quite, they were quite uh, slopey face waves and they never really started to draw up. 
And there's a whole bunch of guys out there uh, and, and girls out there surfing, and a lot of them were racing down the line. And there was one guy that every single wave that he took, he would just go as fast as he could down the line. And I was on a seven foot um, soft top. And he, he was on a wave and I knew what he was gonna do. So don't, before you start saying that's bad, Anthony, don't do that. He had taken off, surfed past me. I then took off on the wave behind him. He was still going down the line and I had managed to go down. I did a full cut back and then a top turn. And then he turned around and saw me. But that's how much space he was leaving on every single wave. That it was enough for me on a, on a seven foot soft top to be able to do a full cutback. And he didn't even know that I was there. So that's why you can't tell me off because he, he, I knew that he had no idea that I was there. And then, and then he saw me and then, I, and then I kicked out. And I think then he sort of realized that he needed to come back a bit. Um, and then a similar situation where I was on a wave and a guy dropped in on me and he dropped in and because he, he was so worried about I might catch up with him. He went so fast that he ended up surfing off of the wave and then I just carried <laughs> off. I just stayed in, the, I just literally just stayed in the pocket and then carried on surfing. But it's, it's, it's amazing how many people do surf out. They, they go so fast that, that they don't, but they don't realise that they're doing that. Oh, hang on a it's this, this thing's evolving as, as, as we speak. Hang on. So it's just, it's just like the... Top um, the pyramid, yeah. Well, so where are you on the? So literally hier hieroglyphics. We've now turned it into a pyramid. This thing, this thing is, is evolving as we speak. There we go. Now it's trying to focus on Clay's eyes. But there we go. We're about to you on the. We're about to you on the hieroglyphics. I know that I am at probably there. I'm sort of intermediate, verging on trying to move to the higher intermediate lines. Uh, but just being aware of that is is a really powerful exercise of knowing where you are. So I really want to eat this here, cake. Here's, you, something, talk, here's something interesting. Okay, so when I started coaching, for the first 10 years of coaching, I tried to get people to fix their motor skill. It's like bend your knees, use your arms, twist, lean. But it's kind of like if they were in freeze and flight mode, mm. none of it even sunk in. So I, I was the most frustrated coach on the beach because it was like I couldn't communicate to these people. Um, like if you're frozen, no one's listening. And if you're in flight mode, you're just running from the wave. They're not going to slow down and try to use a coffee cup or kiss the knees or any kind mm. of stuff like that. So then even teaching them more motor skills outside of the water, like, okay, jump on a surf skate and this is how you do it. Mm. Until such time that they have control over their brain and that they freeze, flash and fight, no amount of motor skill training is going to help them. Yeah. Okay, as soon as they relax, then they're like, what was I supposed to do again? And then they'll start trying something. Yeah. Okay. And this is where we come back to Ombi, isn't it? So be, yeah. at the right, be at the right place on the wave, but then you've got to be in the right headspace. Correct. Then if you're in the right headspace, you'll have control over your body and then you'll have control of your board. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really powerful tool, that. So I suppose for everyone watching... The graphic's brilliant. So there, there we go. You've seen it here first. This is the official, this is the official prototype. I will, uh, I'll sign it if you want. <laughs> it might be more valuable if Clay signs it, but I'll sign it as well. Uh, well and we, we, we'll, I, we'll auction it. We'll I auction think, it. I think we're going to talk about this a fair bit more. Um, and we, we're going to start introducing it more into Ombi. Yeah, uh, because, so, go on, sorry. Because I've, I've been to macaronis and people have gone, I'm an intermediate surfer and I surf four foot waves and they get there and they're almost like taking the bottom line. And I'm like, dude, you, you're an absolute beginner. You shouldn't be here, this is dangerous. You're gonna end up on the reef and they always end up on the reef. So I suppose looking at it this way. I feel that's targeted to me. <laughs> No, sorry. I'm joking. I'm joking. But looking at it that way, that you can then figure out the line that you take. If you've got a video and you just look at and the white water, how it tracks across the wave, if you just draw that, that is where you're at with your surfing. And then you need to actually start on working on the mind aspect of it, um, then the body, then buy a surfboard last. Mm. Am I going to make myself look really stupid if I ask this <laughs> Potentially. I am. So, at the, at the risk, at the risk 
of looking like a complete numpty, I'm going to do it. I've got no idea what Zol is. What, what is? Zol. That's why smoking Zol. Zol. Okay, so he's from South Africa and Zol <laughs> means weed. Oh, okay. <laughs> So smoking weed uh, is good. So. Although, although, although my wise words before were the, the, the way that you breathe is the way that you live. So, so I, don't, I don't know if those two things, <laughs> I don't know if those two things go hand in hand. I'm going to take it off the screen. Uh, great job, guys. T-shirts for the graphic. Yeah. So people are saying put put that on T-shirts now. And uh, just will how, how long have we been on for? 45 minutes. If anyone's got any questions, you can chuck them in. Uh, but another thing as well that we have realised, um, I think that you realised it again in Nicaragua, something that we definitely realised in macaronis, is that so many people want to be doing this before they've fixed that initial thing. There's this, there's this thirst. This, this, yes. Be- because we're now living in this, in, this, in this world where you've got access to all of the information at the touch of a few keys, you can type in how to do a bottom turn on YouTube and all of a sudden you can get videos up to tell you how to do it. So we're all trying to learn all this stuff, but we're not doing it in the order where you go, if you build this block that will then allow you to do that block. So people are trying to do yep. a top turn before they've even learned to do a bottom turn. So people don't trust their bodies. Okay, so what they're doing is they're educating the mind and they're not educating the body. So if you think a baby, when it learns how to walk, it looks at the parents and it just copies. And through trial and error and falling, the, the baby's body learns how to walk. But it takes time. Yeah. Okay. People don't want to put the time in. And they just want to train the brain and hoping that the brain will tell the body what to do. But it's not like that because normally the brain is not being very nice and supportive to the body. Mm. It's normally going, oh, don't fall off, don't wipe out. So then it's causing stress. Yeah. And normally when there's stress, we either try too hard or, or something. So we activate the wrong muscles. Yeah. Okay. And you can see that when people surf, like Brian was stressed. Yeah. He's activating the wrong muscles. Lisa was stressed. I just want to put, I know that we've, we've picked on Brian and Lisa in this position, in, in, this, in this video here, but I think if you were to just go down to, to a break where it's, where it's busy, you would see 90% of the people in the water well, when are, it, are, are going to be holding that, when that kind of tension. When a good surfer surfs, the thing that you like about them is they look effortless. And what it is, is no stress. It's just like, it's like, here we go, pass your pen, effortless. But if I was like, oh! Like there's all that stress in there. And then if you see that, it doesn't look nice. So here's, so here, here, here's a question. Would you say then, would you say that if you took somebody who was getting into surfing and they were sort of beginning to meet, so, so they'd, they'd gone through, learned, learned to stand up or whatever, was maybe riding like a mid-length or, 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 or something like that now. Yeah. Um, and they just... Every time that they went out, they just focused on standing up and relaxing. Do you think that they would progress faster than somebody that was out there going, yeah, okay, I'm going to... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I, d- because they would... F- I think so too. They would feel more. Yeah. And then... They'd become really flowy, I think. You'd, you'd end up being this real... It's like, ooh, like, wow, like they're, they're gliding. Yeah, so it's, it's kind I'm of... I'm just trying to have an idea. It's like this, if, if you were sitting down at a party and a song came on that you liked and your foot just started tapping to the beat and then you got up and danced, you would understand the song better as opposed to just getting up and trying to do whatever you want to do to a song and you don't yeah. quite know what the song is. Yeah, hang on, I love this. So this, unfortunately, well, I I'm not going to use the word unfortunately. Um, well, I'll bring a comment up. My daughter does gymnastics here in Oceanside. She's not allowed to even try the skills her body is not ready for yet. So, and that is, that is, that is, that is, that is, the, that's pretty much what we're saying. I was speaking to, 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 to Luke last night. So, so Luke is, is um, if, if you've listened to any of the podcasts, it's his voice. Luke is, 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 is a, is a, you don't, you don't ever he's really see. He's an engineer. So he, you don't ever really see his face. He's behind the, he's sort of behind the scenes, but he is, he's crafts a lot of the courses and stuff that we do. And this is what me and him were talking about last night because he's done, is it cal- 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 calisthenics? That, that thing. It was, you can't do one thing until you've learned to do the one before. So, so oh, oh, Damien, how are we doing? I just realised who the name was. 
And now I feel rude that we didn't use Pacto. <laughs> <laughs> it is on the iPad. It's just that the only bit of footage that I had quickly was, was, was still on that app. I won't say it. But uh, if anybody does want to, to do some an analysis of their footage, uh, download Pacto. Yep. There we go. I feel like I've redeemed now after, <laughs> after using Cody. <laughs> right. What were we saying? Um, I caught myself completely off guard what, what Damien did. You were talking about people not trying stuff that they haven't yet, their bodies don't know how to do. Yep. So put it this way, a baby learning how to walk, you're not going to teach it to do a, a backflip. No. Or, or a cartwheel. It's like it first learns how to sit, then it learns how to crawl, then it learns how to stand, then it learns how to walk, then it learns how to run. Yep. So... I suppose in surfing... Um, can, I th can I throw you under the bus? You always, you, you always do it to me. Can I, can I do it to you? Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's just say then that we're in that situation. You've got someone who's never surfed before or someone yeah. who's been surfing for a long time yeah. and like me, they now need to go like a bit of a reset. Okay, so these are completely different guys. To, oh, so you give me two different it. scenarios. Right, right, we'll just the go, reason being... Right, we'll just go... Ugh, I need a piece of paper. The one person will have... This. So the one person will you have talk. no bad habits, even though they haven't learned. Someone that's surfed for a long time will have bad habits. All right, I'm going to give you a clear scenario. Hang on. I'm going with a piece of paper okay. out of the printer, because I'm going to, we're going to go document this. Let me, I'm going to get rid of you for a second there. Okay. Okay, right. So you're taking somebody. They're brand new to surfing. If you had to say five steps, five, five building blocks, what, what would you first... Get them to like like a baby trying to walk for them to be standing up and surfing. What would the what would the steps be? Okay, so really helicopter view here. If if I could teach someone from the beginning, I'd teach them to surf lying down. To surf lying down. Why yeah. is that? Because as we stand up, we complicate things. Okay. Okay. Because you can slide the board, you can't go fast, you can't twist it to generate speed, but when you're lying down. Um, all you got to do is, is pretty much put it on rail and, and try to do the figure eights. And then you will actually, if we went back one, I'll teach them to body surf first. So body surf? Yes. Then surf lying down? Yes. Then what? Then the same lines they take lying down. Because you'd never lie down on the board and just go straight across the middle of the wave. You'd, you'd want to go to the bottom and lean into it, to the top, to the bottom and lean into it. The same lines you take lying down, try to replicate that standing up. Now, that's when you're starting to have to use your body by doing the leaning and the twisting. Okay, so then it starts yeah. coming to be a bit more technical. All right. So surf lying down, then they stand up. Yep. So one, two, and three. Try to take the same line. Okay, number four. But I... Th is the key there, though, to be relaxed in that process? Well, this is number four. Okay, number four. Get rid of tension. Eliminate tension. Because... All right, so when you say take the same line, all right, it's going to be a figure eight. I will show you this in a minute. Although my right. hands are so, terrible. So remember, you're lying down, you're trying to do this figure eight on a wave. That's if it's a nice, let's call it a point break. and it's. it's you're nice. not going to turn the board around if you're lying down, are you? Trying to. Lying down, you okay. can go straight down, you can turn, you can go up. Okay. Right? So we're trying to do a figure eight. When you stand up and you try to replicate that, you'll, feel, you'll see that there's parts of the figure eight that are broken. Okay? It might be the, the top quarter, it might be the bottom quarter, it might be when you rebound off the foam, you're not going to the top. So there's parts of the figure eight that are missing or broken. Okay. That is where you need to work on your body to fill out the figure eight. So is that step five? Or is that step four? Um, so we've got to eliminate tension. Well, that was, that was number four, what you, what you just said. So eliminate tension. Yes, so now it's about body awareness. And then five is body awareness. Okay. And then six is... No, no, we're going to do it in five. Five, okay. Five, that is it. Then after that, then obviously then you get into other stuff. But now while I, I, I do highly encourage you to, 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 uh, to, to join the OMBI programs, however, on this live here now, if you've, if you've stuck around for 54 minutes and 32 seconds, you've now got to the point where if you've got someone who is learning how to surf, 
you could go out there and literally coach them. So number, step number one was body surf. Okay, step whoa, whoa, two, whoa. You answer this. Why body surf? So that you get a really good understanding of, of what that wave does and how it feels yeah, and the truth. Because we're there to surf a wave. Yeah. We're not I there love body surfing. to surf off the wave onto the shoulder. Yeah. So body surf. So body surf, then surf lying down. Don't be in a rush to stand up. Get that feeling lying down. Turn the board up and down. Step okay, three. So, so the lying down part is going to teach you how to catch waves, how the board fits, what you can and can't do. Yep. So with whatever board that you're riding, there's a limitation. If it's too long, it won't fit, so you can take off an angle. Um, so lying down gives you a clear indication of what you can and can't do with the limitations of that board. Okay. So, so that's get to know the wave, get to know your board. So get to know, getting to know you. Okay, getting to know the wave, getting to know the board, so that's surf lying down. Then three, stand up and take the same lines. So what are you getting to know there? Your body. Getting to know your body. Surely that'd be four, eliminate tension. No. That's mind. Get to know your head. Yes. Where's Love it. Get to know head your head. head. Okay. So, get to know body. Th this is, we just did Ombi. You know that. Yeah. This whole thing, we've just done Ombi. <laughs> do you know what the easier way to do it? Like, so you could do this. You could go out and just body surf and then surf lying down and then stand up and take the same line and then you focus on eliminating tension and then the final thing is just be aware of what your body's doing. Could do that. Yes, you should. And you, you'd be surfing in no yep. time, or just, that, just, that's just the head over to ombi.co and just, and just join the training program. There's a whole bunch of free stuff in there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all cool. Right, we've we got a few questions that are coming in now. I've yep. been speaking long enough and asking enough stupid questions to give you a chance to write big questions by the look of it. Uh, Shannon. Shannon, I have done that, focusing on standing and relaxing when surfing, and it resulted in me just standing on the wave and stepping off as it passed. I was on a big log. Yep. It's, it's one of the nicest things that you can do because y you get so much, <coughs> bless you. you, you get so much feeling from the wave, the less you do. Yeah. Um, and it's one of the best things that you can do, um, especially in a really hollow, gnarly wave. You see all people that just look like totally relaxed and even though the thing's just like a, a gigantic monster, it's how you deal with stress. Yeah, no matter I'm, how crazy the situation, I'm not the more relaxed I'm you not, are. I'm not very good at that bit of stress. In saying that, that, that barrel that, that you got in, in macaronis, when I was paddling it up and over and I saw you coming towards me, you look... You, you, I was you, enjoying it. Yeah, you look like a, like, a, like a kid in a candy shop. Yeah, that was fun. I was thinking, shit. That's literally what was going through my head. And I was almost going, what would have come up my body if I'd ended up inside one of I'm, those things? Until you get one. Because I was yeah. scared paddling in. Build the evidence. Correct. <laughs> and then it's easy after that. All yeah. right, here we go. Oh, we got a bit of best advice here. And I'm going to say this is Anthony. Best advice Clayton ever, ever gave me was to take off on a couple of waves and basically do nothing but relax. After a couple of waves, drawing a straight line, a straight, simple line, I was relaxed enough to push my surfing further. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Well, what you're also doing there is you, you're, you're lowering your expectations. And then you have so much more fun. But when you rock up with a big bag of expectations and you're not me meeting those ex expectations, you end up um, having a really bad surf and, um, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, just so you know, your cake's amazing. Uh, you guys were so close to us in Nicaragua. We're on the Pacific coast down in Costa Rica. Well, you could have driven up and said hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Have you guys have you guys ever thought of coming to Brazil to catch some waves? So I've been to Brazil twice. Um, once surfing for the under eighteen South African team, and then one that was a very long time ago. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was I was young, and then once coaching the under eighteen surfing South Africa team. So I went as a surfer, then as a coach. How did you do as a surfer? Um. We were supposed to surf the ISA games, but because of Slavka had um, sanctions against them with um, all, the, all the political stuff, we didn't get to go to the ISA. So as a, uh, we'd still saved for the trip, so we ended up just going to Brazil. But okay. it wasn't a contest or anything. So it was a holiday? Yeah. Uh, you could just mind... Why isn't... My mouse just stopped working. Oh, there we go. You could just mind surf it. 
Yeah, okay, so <laughs> when you say mind surf it, it's easy from the beach to mind surf it, but what about when you're on the wave, are you mind surfing yeah. it? Yeah, all of a sudden there's flies in here. I want to get my cake. So um, when you're on the wave, you kind of want to look and, and mind surf that same wave and the body will follow. Safe. <laughs> but if you don't look, your body's going to do random weird stuff and it's you won't like what you see on video. Mm. Okay, how do you relax when it's so steep? Well, look at the line that you want to take. So, look, if you're going to walk down a mountain, if there's a sheer cliff but there's a little goat trail, you take the goat trail. Okay, so if the wave's super, super steep and you don't have the ability, don't go on that wave. But when you look for the potential as to how you're going to make it rather than where you're going to potentially fall off, yeah. you will fall off. It's like me horse riding. It's like I was looking for a place to fall until I looked as to like how am I going to do this. Yeah. Then my mind changed and it, it, I found the solution. Yeah. When we were surfing Straddy that, that time actually, I had... Uh, I had um, that was like two years ago. That was like two years ago. We but we, that we, time. <laughs> that, that one time that one I surfed Straddy. <laughs> <laughs> and... I was because it's because because Stradley just kind of comes in all of a sudden. It's like whoom! It's like for me, it was it was it was scary, and but I kept on focusing on Dan. You said just focus on the outcome. So I think a good answer to this: How do you relax when it's so steep? Is don't focus on the steep. Focus on the outcome. Focus on where where, where you want to be. Where you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, Shannon. What about surfing the Pacific Northwest? Got no idea where the Pacific Northwest is. That like Canada? So I it's think it's, north co it's it's cold. I reckon it's cold. And west. West Coast, yeah, uh, that's of nice. of the USA. Um, so generally, I love to surf in board shorts, and I like some good waves. Um, if I'm in a wetsuit, ask Ant what I'm like. My ribs start to charm in the wind. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a skinny kid. I don't like the cold too much. Light bulb just went off. Perfect shot. That was a real shot, bro. Okay, uh, and mind surf, mind surf while, while you are surfing. Talk, talking of cold, talking of cold, I'm yeah. actually heading down to Melbourne uh, this weekend. I've got, a, I've got a conference down there that I'm speaking at, and then on the way back, I'm going to go and jump in the pool. I've been told it's got pretty chilly uh, as of late, so Keep I've got my 4-3, ready to rock and roll, booties, gloves, but excited for it. So if anybody's there on, down at Urban Surf on Sunday afternoon... Uh, keep your eye out because I'll be I'll be I'll be around for the afternoon. At the moment, I'm surfing one session, but I'm going to try and sneak in on a so on I'm, another. I'm back for another three weeks, and then I'm off to wherever all these flies come from. This is ridiculous. I'm off to Maldives. Like, uh, so I'll be surfing warm water. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, so so, so Clay's off um, on the boat trip. That's two two back to back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, yeah, we got some Ombi crew that we're joining up with on some boat trips in the Mens uh, Maldives. Yep. Um, it's going to be great. We've asked the captain to sail away to some empty waves. So we're not going to surf the main breaks. We're just going to surf some uncrowded, really fun, good waves. Uh, this, will, this will be a kind of a bit of a, uh, not, 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 a, not, a, not so much a secret trip, but it's just you going. We don't have, we don't, so I'm not going. Nico's not going. Um, so, so none of it's going to be documented unless, unless well, you get your phone out and film something. We are trying to do smaller groups um, and just make it a bit more intimate and a bit more personal. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really enjoying those groups because um, a, a lot of it's about personal growth. Um, yeah. It's, it's all about... It's surfing. not really about surfing. It's got nothing to do with surfing. Like it's pretty much, it's all to do with the six inches that's between your ears. Yeah. Fixing that because once you fix that, then the rest of it kind of yeah, it sorts itself out. To follow. Mm. So um, yeah, it's about personal growth, and um, never thought I'd be in that game, but it looks like I'm, I am. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's good. The Clayton Robbins. Oh. Although I did want to find some cowboy music when you said that you went horse riding. I was going to get some cowboy music while you, while you were telling the story. Um, but look, uh, we've we've been on for an hour. We've been. Um, Talking, I, I, I think that we've actually ended up covering a lot of a lot of topics. We've we've, yeah. come, we've come up with a new T-shirt design. This will now be going into uh, into the, the filing the filing system, which is called to the side of the desk over here. There it is. It's now <laughs> filed away. That is now a new T-shirt. But uh, we'll, we for for anybody. Oh, there's some stuff that's coming through. 
Uh, for, for anybody that is within the Onbeat community, then we'll be doing the next Coaching Live on Tuesday. Luke should be sending out an email for you to upload your footage so we can come in there and do some, do some coaching. So that'll be happening next Tuesday. We'll do a US one, a uh, US time and a UK time. Uh, both of them will be on the same day, but I think if you're in the US, it ends up being the day before. But just look yeah. at the email. That will explain everything. Uh, John's asking if I'm if I'm doing a vlog. I, I won't I won't be doing a vlog because I'm so busy with this event. I'm literally on the way back from the so I'm doing a huge event for 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 Subway. This is the first time since the beginning of COVID that I'm going to get on stage in front of. Uh, probably about between 900 and 1,000 people. So I'm so excited to be back in a room uh, of people that big. So that's pretty exciting. So I'm consumed with that, but on the way back to the airport, I'm going to stop in uh, and surf for the afternoon, my flights, uh, early evening. So no, there won't, there won't be a vlog, but I'll probably try and do some Instagram stories. Uh, are, you, are you the host or are you just like a presenter? I am doing... So I'm doing a presentation during the awards. So the host might go... Um, I'd like to introduce you, Anthony, that guy from Ombi. Uh, <laughs> no, so I, so when I'm when I'm working professionally, doing my speaking stuff, I'm Anthony. When I'm doing Ombi, I'm Ant. So uh-huh. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a different stage name. Right. I don't know what I'm more about as I am. Uh, Corin keeps on asking, how's how, how's the shoulder? Clay, Clay's, Clay's got a sore shoulder. It wasn't from the horse riding. Yeah, um, uh, going to see a um, my GP today at one thirty. And then I'm going to have another sort of like a little up where they inject into my, um, up, so I've got... Shoulder. Oh, I'm spitting cake everywhere. I've got adhesive capsulitis, which means my shoulder is, my, my shoulder capsule is swollen and um, I've got limited range of movement. So I'm going to get an injection into that, which is um, CT guided and they pop the capsule open and then hopefully that's going to give me some... Mobility again, so I'm going to get that at the end of May, a week before my mile dive trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so hopefully I can paddle. And how's that though? Because we were looking at the footage before, and see that fly go right in front of my face. Then There's, that fly was massive. That was there was like a pterodactyl of a fly that just went right across my face. Then my cutback, my shoulder was getting that. Like, you got a gammy shoulder, and you still open up more than I do. So I can't even use that as an excuse. There is one more question, and then we're going to disappear. Yeah. A problem I have is committing when I am late, and the lip in front of me is breaking. For if I was good enough to head straight down and bottom turn around the phone, then I can rejoin the section. Yeah, you won't know until you go. Um, most of the times you'll get it wrong, but when you get it right... Cupboard slide, just making my welcome. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also just dropping into skate bowls. You get used to throwing yourself over the ledge. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do to help sort of prepare yourself for those situations. Mm. Yeah, and also how how much do you want it? If you want it, go for it. You'll probably fall, but you'll learn something. Yeah. If you don't want it, you'll probably fall, and you won't learn the right thing. You'll just learn more fear and more anxiety. I think if you can come up laughing, even if you yeah. force force yourself to laugh, then it changes. It changes the experience well, completely well, because do you know what it stores the experience in a different mm, place. It doesn't it store does. it in the fear component. Yeah, it f- stores it in like okay, well, this is what I learned. Yeah, if we look at it from an, from an NLP perspective, like if if I asked all of you now to just sit there and just start laughing, and they, they even do like therapy sessions around this, don't they? Everyone just sits there and they force themselves to laugh, but they, yeah. and they, and they end up feeling really good. But it, if we were to look at it from an NLP perspective. If you come up and you laugh, you're, you're effectively anchoring a good feeling into into that situation, rather than coming yeah. out, oh my gosh, I just got been down there. Yeah. If you just come and you <laughs> then <laughs> It was amazing. <laughs> I nearly what, died. Are you trying to do my accent? Yes. <laughs> anyway, on that my note. British accent. On that note, I think Clay stiff, needs, stiff Clay, Clay needs sugar. Yeah, I, need, I, need, I need to finish this cake before, uh, bef- before the flies get it, because let's face it, they are like dinosaurs. Um, in here, they're, they're massive. Not that I'm catastrophizing anything. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, on that note, we're going. Yeah, thanks for joining everyone. Um, Cheerio, people. Catch you next time. And if you haven't uh, already done so, head over to Onbeat and download the app. Lots of free stuff. And you get to hear more of us talking a lot. <laughs> See ya.